Hey guys, this is Mr. C. And in this video, we're going to be talking about operations with radical expressions, which means we're going to take uh, two radical expressions and we're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. And we're going to see how to do that. So uh, the first example, I have the square root of 216 plus the square root of 54. When you get something like this, the first thing you need to do is simplify the two square roots. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take these two numbers right here and add them together and think that that's going to be your square root. That's not going to work. There is no property that says that that works. But yet a lot of students do that because their brains want to do that. They want it to be right because that's kind of the easy way to go, but you're not going to get the correct answer. So you're going to have to do a little bit of work, and that means breaking these numbers down, first of all. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take 216, and what I would do is just divide it by 2. Okay, so if you divide that by 2, you get 108. We're going to divide that by 2 also. So if you divide that by 2, you get 54. Okay, we'll divide that by 2 again, and we'll get 27. And if we remember, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. All right. So here's what we have for 216, the square root of 216. Three threes and three twos. The square root says a pair, on, a pair of these factors here is worth one on the outside. So to save a little bit of room, I'm going to go up this time a little bit. So I have a pair of twos. I've got a pair of threes. And then I have a two and a three still left over. And when I multiply those together, that's going to give me six. So that's really going to be 6 root 6. Right, let's do the same thing with 54. 54, if we break that down, um, and we already have it here, but we'll do it again anyway. We have 2 times, and it was 27. And again, 27 was 3 threes. Three. Now we circle my primes. Okay, so now we have a pair of threes comes out. 3, and then 3 times 2 is 6. No pairs for those. So what we're looking at is adding together these two guys. 6 root 6 plus 3 root 6. So I'm going to do that down here now. So we have 6 root 6 plus 3 root 6. And when you add these two uh, radicals together, these two square roots, the 6 and the 3 are like coefficients. And so we have 6 root 6s and another 3 root 6s are going to give me a total of nine root sixes. And that's basically how it's done. And that's your final answer right there. All right, let's take a look at another one. This time, and by the way, when we're adding and subtracting, we're going to do the same thing every time. We have root 32 plus root 128. So let's break this down. 16. I'm going to take a shortcut here. 16 is 4 times 4. Whenever I get to a perfect square, I'll just go ahead and break it down into the um, the two numbers that make that perfect square. They're the same, 4 and 4. And I'm going to treat these like primes because it makes my life easier. And it turns out root 32 is really 4. And then that extra 2 goes here. All right, so what about 128? Well, 128 is going to be 2 times... 64. 64 is a perfect square. That's 8 times 8. And I'm going to circle them because I'm treating those root 8, those, uh, those 8s like primes. However, if I know I have a pair of them, that pair is going to come out as an 8 on the outside and that root 2 right there. So now I'm adding together 4 root 2 and 8 root 2. So 4 plus 8 is 12. So this guy is really going to be 12 root 2. Now, if you have any doubt about that, you can always put them into a calculator and you can match the decimals up and just make sure that it, that it does uh, give you the same decimal as the original problem, and it will. All right, let's try another one. Okay, this time I've got some coefficients out here. Not a problem. So the two I'm going to leave there, I'm going to break down the 27 
I've got three there, right? And another three. And if you think about it, 27, we've been talking about is a perfect cube. There's three threes in 27. Now you could have done nine times three and then broken the nine down again, but this just kind of gets it done in one step. Now here's the interesting thing. You've got this two sitting out here. So that two is gonna stay. So when I simplify this, that two right there has to stay in front. I've got a pair of threes and I have this extra three. And then that's gonna give me six root three. The five root three is already simplified. I can't really simplify that anymore. So what I really have then is six root three from this and another five root three would give me 11 root three. Okay. This one, I'm gonna now shift to some cube roots. Let's get this here. Okay, so let's shift to some cube roots and see how this works. 81 is nine times nine. Now, since it's a cube root, I'm not gonna circle the nines yet. That's only for square roots. So I'm gonna break these down one more time. Three, three, and two more threes. Okay, so now I need three of them down here to come out as one on the outside because my index is three. So, one, two, three, and I have three, and then I've gotta be careful, cube root of three this time, not square root, but cube root. So I've got three of these guys here. They look complicated, but it's really just the cube root of three, and another one. Well, that's gonna be a total of four, right? Because we do know that there is actually a one in front of there. There's one of them. Three and one makes four. So four times the cube root of three. So why did I put that little dot there? I don't want anybody confusing that four and that three as being together and thinking it's 43 or something like that, or four times three is 12. No, I wanna keep that four separate out front and I usually space them out with a little dot there for multiplication. It's a good habit. All right, let's try this one. Now we have some fourth roots, just to kind of see how that works. Okay, so, and I'm assuming that I'm doing this like a student would do it that really doesn't, you know, have a lot of experience with this. 16, we'll do two times eight. Now we already know that eight is three twos. And the more we see that, the better. Okay, so if I'm gonna simplify this guy, it's gonna be one, two, three, four twos, and it is a fourth root. Now, since this matches, there's four of these, and it's a fourth root, all four of these come out as a single two, and that's it. So the fourth root of 16 is two, because two times two times two times two is 16. Same thing over here with the 81. You got nine times nine. The two nines break down into three and three. And you kind of quickly realize that you've got four threes here. And the same thing's gonna happen here that happened here. One, two, three, four. And so that's gonna be just a single three. Two plus three equals. And that whole expression that looked really difficult is nothing more than five. All right. Subtraction is really nothing more than addition with a negative. So this is gonna work the same way. Break down 108, two times, and I think that was 54, right? 54 was two times, if I remember correctly, 27. 27 is three threes. And I wish I had this much practice when I was in high school because my life would be a whole lot easier. It is a square root. So now we're looking at two, times three, times root three, there's an extra, and that's six root three. Okay, let's look at 75. 75 is 25 times three, right? So let's go ahead and do that. 25 is a perfect square, and that breaks down into five and five. Okay, two fives match up with the square root, the index. Remember, that's a little two there, even though nobody's gonna write it there. So five 
root three. So what's six root three take away five root three? Well, that should just be a single root three when we're done. Okay. Here we're gonna have some numbers that are a little larger, but that's okay, that's not gonna hurt. This one, let's do 10 times 64. They're square roots, so that's good. 10, five and two. 64 is eight and eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and just circle the two eights because that's a pair and that's the only pair. So this guy, eight, and then the five and the two don't have pairs, so you just multiply them back together. Eight root 10. Okay, let's do 160. Okay, so that's gonna be 16 times 10. And you're starting to see the pattern probably already. 10 is five and two. The 16 is four and four. Again, I'm gonna treat that, those two fours like they were primes, because I'm just simplifying. So the four comes out but the 10 stays in, okay? So what's eight root 10, take away four root 10, and that would be four root 10s is what you have left. All right, let's try this one. 150 is 15 times 10. Let's break these down, they're composite. So five and two. Five and three. Okay, so that's gonna be five. And then three times two is six. Okay, so now I have neg neg uh, minus root 486. So this one, 486 is not a number that's common to me. I don't work with it all the time. So we're just gonna start breaking it down. Let's use two right from the start. So 486 divided by two is 243. Now that number I have seen before quite a few times. If you add up all the digits, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then you know that nine goes into it. So 243 divided by nine is 27. And so that's gonna yield a bunch of threes. You get two of them here. You get three of them here. Okay, so again, we're at square root, so we're looking for pairs. So I've got a pair of threes here, another pair of threes, and then three times two is six. These don't have pairs, and that's gonna give me nine root six. So what happens if you don't get any pairs here? If you don't get any pairs here, then you just leave that square root just like it is, and you can't really do anything with it. Um, if the two radicals don't match up here, then you also can't do anything with it. But all of these examples, you're gonna get, you're getting the same number here and here, the same radical. And so you can treat that like an X almost. And you can treat these like coefficients. So you just add, subtract the coefficients. So five take away nine should be negative four root six. And so why is my number negative this time? My answer, because you're subtracting a bigger number from a smaller one. And no matter what, you're going to get a negative answer right there. So uh, kind of be careful with that. You might want to size it up at the beginning to kind of see what you're going to get at the end, just to make sure you do get the negative four root six, because I know a lot of students might write positive four root six. All right. Okay, now we have a cube root, just to kind of see how those behave. So 343. Okay, if you take 343 and you take three and three is six and four is 10. So three doesn't go into it, nine doesn't go into it, five doesn't go into it, two doesn't go into it. Okay, so now what does go into it? Well, let's try seven. So I'm not gonna go into the divisibility rule by, for seven because it requires you to start looking at the digits and adding and subtracting and all that. So I'm not gonna do that. Let's try seven, 343 divided by seven equals. All right, there you go. So seven goes into it. Seven's prime, 49. Well, I know 49 is seven times seven. Okay, now I do have a cube root here, so I need three of them. And luckily I've got three of them. So this whole thing turns out to be 
seven. Now, if this does not simplify to an integer, then I'm gonna have an answer that's gonna have two terms in it. So let's see if 216 does. Okay, so if we break it down, and I know we've seen 216 before, let's divide it by two. Okay, so 216 divided by two is 108. Okay, 108 is two times 54. 54 is two times 27, ah, there we go. 27, three threes. All right, so we need three of them to come out as one on the outside. We have three threes. We have three twos. Okay, there's nothing left but a one. And so three times two is six. And so seven take away six is equal to, amazingly enough, just positive one and it's done. All right, so here's another cube. Let's see how this one works, just for some practice here. I got this under the wrong one. Okay, 625, I've seen that one before. We're gonna divide that by five. And so that's gonna be five and 125. 125, I know that one from working with it. That's five cubed. That's three fives. But if you didn't know that, you could just divide it by five and you'd get five times 25. But you'd still get three fives no matter what. All right, so this guy, it's a cube root. So one, two, three. So we have five root five. Oh, cube root five. Yep, don't forget, because I'm bad about that. Okay, so now this guy, let's break that down. Uh, let's do 32 times 10. Okay, so 10 is five times two. Those are both prime. 32 I've seen, but I'm gonna break it down one more time. I'm gonna break it down. I know that that's five twos in there, but I'm gonna keep breaking it down just for you guys. It's two times 16. Okay, 16 is four times four. And we have to keep going because remember, it's not a square root. So I can't just take those fours this time. Two, and then two more. Okay, so what do we have here? I need three of them. So one, two, three, there's a two. One, two, three, there's another two. And then a five right there. And that five has to just sit there. And let me not make that mistake again. So this is actually four times the cube root of five. So I have five times the cube root of five minus four times the cube root of five, and that will give me one cube root of five. I don't put my ones in front because it's understood that a one is there, and um, we I don't do that. And so that's a habit that a lot of students have is to put that one there. Just kind of break yourself from that habit at some point in time and you don't need to write the one right there. It's just cube root of five. All right. Now we're gonna multiply. Now, when you multiply, there is a rule that says the square root of A times the square root of B is equal to the square root of A times B. I do have that rule available. What that means is I can take these two numbers and multiply them together under a common square root. And if I do that, I'm gonna get the square root of 24 times 147 over, oh, not over, but square root of all of that. Now, how come I don't multiply 24 and 147? Because if I do that, I'm gonna get 24 times 147, 35, 28. Well, the reason why I'm not gonna multiply these together right now is because I'm eventually gonna have to break them apart to simplify this. So what good is it gonna to be to me to you know, break these uh, or uh, multiply them together when I'm just gonna have to break it apart again, right? And go through that hassle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just start breaking these numbers down. 24 is eight times three. And eight, again, is three twos. Okay. Let's take 147. Uh, if you take 147, four plus one is five and plus seven is 12. Since 12 is a multiple of three, that means the three goes into it. Okay, so what's 147 
divided by three. Well, that's gonna be 49. Ooh, that's nice. 49 is seven times seven. Okay, so now here's what I've got. I've got pairs now I have to take out. I've got a pair of twos. I have a pair of threes. I have a pair of sevens, but I do not have an extra two right there, right? So that extra two has to stay under the square root. Now I'm gonna take all of this and multiply it together. So two times three is six, seven times six is 42. So I have 42 square root of two. So let's check that out. Let's see if that's right. So I said that 24 times 147 is equal to 3528, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take the square root of that and I get 59.396, blah, blah, blah. It keeps on going, it's irrational. All right, so 59.396, let's remember that. Let's take root two times 49, uh, 42, and I get the same exact number. So I know that this expression and this expression are correct. And because this came from this rule up here, then I know that these two expressions are also the same. So I know I'm right. Okay. Let's keep it going. Okay, so I think it's going to be easier. I, I don't usually like to make factor trees right here and then multiply everything together because that's it. With students, that seems to be kind of difficult or hard to understand. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do this. I'm going to use my rule, 80 times 6. That rule is very handy. Okay, so let's go ahead and start breaking these down. 80 is 8 times 10. 10 is 5 times 2. 8 is 3 threes. Three, I'm sorry, 3 twos. Okay, the six is three and two. All right, so let's see what this looks like. It is square root, so I have a pair of twos. I've got another pair of twos. I've got a five, a three, and a two now sitting there. The five, the three, and the two have nothing, um, no pairs. So five times three is 15, times two is 30. So I'm thinking it's gonna be the square root of 30. So I'm going to assume that we have 4 root 30 as our final answer. Well, let's take a look and let's just make sure we're right here. So 80 times 6 is 480. Square root 21.908. Let's remember that. 21.908, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's do 30 square root times 4. And I get the same exact decimal. So again, I know I'm right. Okay, so now we've got some variables sitting there. And eventually we knew we had to get to those. Um, when you have variables sitting there, it's no problem. What you're gonna have is this. You can have the square root of 65 times 20. And because multiplication is commutative, these two X's are gonna go together and they're gonna make, and you could do X times X or you could do X squared either one. And we're assuming that X is positive anyway, so we don't need absolute value bars for our final answer. All right, so let's take a look. 65, and then we're going to, since it ends in a five, we can divide it by five. So if we divide that by five, we get 13. Okay, not much happening there. That's no help so far. What about the 20? That's five times four, and four is two times two. Okay, so let's take a look. It is square root, so I have a pair of twos. I have a pair of fives. I don't have a pair for the 13. The x squared, since the index is two, and that's a square, these two match. So that means a single x is coming out, but you're still gonna have that 13 sitting under the square root. Okay. So how is this going to look when we're all done? And so now we have 5 times 2 is 10. X times root 13. All right. And that should be done right there. You can't really put this in the calculator 
you can put the number parts in, but you can't put the X in the calculator. So when you start getting variables, um, it's going to start getting a little bit tougher to check. So um, I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to check this one, and we're, we should be good on that. Okay, and then of course the numbers are gonna get bigger. So let's see what happens. Square root, square root. So this time we've got 228 times 36. And then we got one, two, three X's. So we've got X cubed right there. I'm gonna leave it as X cubed. I'm gonna make this one a little bit more abstract. All right, so let's start breaking down 228. We've got 228, it is even because it ends in a in an even number, so two times 114. Okay, again, 114 is even because it ends in a four. So we're gonna go ahead and divide that by two and we get 57. Is 57 prime? Well, I don't think so. Seven plus five is 12. And so that means three goes into it because 12 is a multiple of three. So if we divide that by three, we get 19. Now I do know that 19 is prime. Okay, so that one's done. 36 is fairly simple. That's just six times six. And we have a square root here. So I am allowed to circle the two sixes this time. So let's look for pairs now. I've got a pair of twos. I've got a pair of sixes. Okay, now here's where it's gonna get tricky. I've got three X's, I need two to come out as one on the outside. That's gonna leave one extra still here. So that single X is coming out, but under the square root, I'm gonna have 19, three, right? And then an extra X. So 19 times three is 57. And that extra X that's still sitting under here is still gonna be left underneath that square root. So my final answer is 12 X times the square root of 57 X. And that looks pretty good. All right. Then you're gonna get numbers that are really, really big. Okay, so when this happens, and it's going to happen, I'm now, since I have limited space here, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and I'm gonna to have to break those numbers down using like another sheet of paper or something like that, or a whiteboard or something that's, got, that's gonna give me a little extra room, right? And uh, just to expect this to happen because it's going to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 2187 and I'm gonna take 36, 864. Why I choose to do this to myself, I'll never know. Okay, and it is cube roots, but that doesn't really matter right now because all I wanna do is break them down. Okay, so let's get all of our factors here. 2187. All right. 7 and 8 is 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, that's a multiple of 9, which means 9 goes into it. Okay, so 2187 divided by 9 gives us 243. I've seen that number before. 9 is 3 times 3. Okay. 243 is again, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's again, a multiple of nine. So 243 divided by nine is 27. So it looks like this number is built up from a bunch of threes. So we got three, three, and then three more over here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven threes. Okay, so when you multiply these together, all right, there is a rule that we can use, and it says the nth root of a times the nth root, and can be any integer there, any positive integer, b is equal to the nth root of a times b. It's just a generalization or an extension of the square root property that I talked about before. Here, the n is three. So what that means is I'm eventually going to get a big, huge cube root down here. And it's going to have, first of all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven threes in there. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. I may regret that. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way out here. It's possible. All right, so let's check this one out. Okay, so it ends in a four, which means it's even. So let's just go ahead and do it. Two. Okay, so we got 36, 8, 64 divided by 2, and that is 18, 432. Again, that's even. So we're going to divide that by 2 again. And then we get 9, 2, 1, 6. Again, even. So we're going to do 2 again. Okay, that's 4608. Again, that's even. 2 again. 2304. Again, that's even. Divide by 2. 1152. See, why do I do this to myself? Here we go. All right, let's divide by 2 again. And we get 576. Divide by 2 again. It's even. 288. Okay, so now I've reached the bottom of my whiteboard. Nice. Let's go all the way over here and let's start with 288. Don't think I haven't had to do this before in class. Divide that by two and I get 144. 144, keep going. Divide by two. And I get uh, 72. Divide that by two. And I get 36. Divide that by 2. I get 18. This has got to stop somewhere, right? Divide that by 2. And I get 9. 9 is 3 and 3. So, oh my gosh, I got two 3s and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 twos. Two threes and 12 twos. Two threes and 12 twos. All right, here I go. 12 of them. One, two, three, four, five, oops, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Uh, how many X's? One, two, three X's. X cubed. Now I have to do this. I have to make a ruler or use a ruler to go all the way across this right here. Now I guess what I'm trying to show you is no problem is really too difficult for you guys to do. It's just perseverance. All right, so here we go. I need groups of three. You ready? All right, so. Uh, let's see, here's a group of three. Threes. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one. Now we got twos. Here's a group of three twos. Another group of three twos. I'm going to go through a whole marker just on this problem. Another three twos. And another three twos. All right, wow. The X cubed and the index here of three match, which means exactly one X is coming out. Okay, so what's my final answer gonna be? Three times three times three is 27. Two times two times two times two is 16 times X. So 27 times 16 is 432x. All of that for 432x. That's how it works. All right, as ugly as that looks, um, I doubt very much that you're gonna get one that's harder than that. It's possible, but you can handle it. You might just have to tape a couple sheets of paper together. I've had to do it before in college, so don't worry, it happens. All right. Or you could deal with these as exponents, but we're not ready, really ready yet to do that every single time because that tends to be a little bit more challenging for students. So this is a very solid way to get your answer right here. It's a lengthy, but it's a solid way to get it. And it's visual. All right, so maybe I don't have another one like that. Oh, good. 
Okay, so now I'm into the easier ones again. All right, so let's take a look at this. You have this rule also, and I like these rules because uh, the rules are really handy. You have another rule that says the square root of A over the square root of B, it's called the quotient rule for square roots, is equal to the square root of A over B. And it's important to realize that these rules, because there's an equal sign there, are backwards and forwards. I could write it like this from here, or I could write it from here to this. Either way, and I've had problems before where either way is to my advantage. Sometimes I want to split it up, and sometimes I want to combine them. Well, this time I want to split them up. I mean, I'm sorry, I want to combine them. Because here's what happens when I combine them. Take a look at this. I'm going to get the square root of 125 x squared over 25x. Now the rule says I can do that. Okay, so now what do I do? Well, now I can just go ahead and divide this like an expression and simplify it. So 125 divided by 25 is going to give me, well, 25 is in the 125, what, five times? And so let's just have divide by five. Let's see, 125 divided by five, just to check you guys. Okay, I did that wrong again. 125 divided by 25. Uh, one more time, 1, 2, 5, divided by 25 equals, yep, 5. So let's go down here, equals, square root, don't lose that, 5, x squared over x, well, there's two in the numerator, one in the denominator, this one's going to cancel with one of those, it's going to leave a single x still there. So it's looking like root 5x is my final answer, okay? So that looks pretty good. Okay, let's try another one. Let's see what rule we can use. Hopefully something. Okay, here we have, uh, we can take these two guys and we can combine them under a common square root, 45x over 20x. And again, sometimes this is an advantage and sometimes it's not. It doesn't help you at all. Well, let's see if this helps me. So what's 45 and 20? Well, 5 goes into both of these, right? 5 goes into 45 9 times. 5 goes into 24 times, right? The x's are going to cancel out because there's a single one in numerator and denominator. So I'm looking at the square root of 9 over 4. Okay, so if we don't know what this is right away, we can take this and we can split it back up into the square root of 9 over the square root of 4. Visually, that's going to be appealing to a lot of people that don't like fractions. We can handle each of these as a separate square root. So root nine is three, root four is two, and that whole thing reduced down to three halves, and then that's it. All right. Let's see what's gonna happen with this one. Okay, this one is gonna give us, if we combine them together, 18x cubed, over 36x. Okay, well 18 and 36. 18 goes into 36 twice. Okay, so let's see what that's going to look like. Okay, so that guy right there is going to cancel with one of those. It's going to leave one on in the numerator, but a two down here. I don't like to write that one up here unless I have to, unless there's nothing else there. Okay, and there's going to be. Three x's in the numerator, one x in the denominator. This one's going to cancel with one of those and leave an x squared up here. Okay, so I have the square root of x squared over 2. All right, if we split that back up, okay, so now we have the square root of x squared over, over root 2. Okay, again, x is greater than 0, so I'm assuming. So that's going to give me a 1x up here, right? Because an index of 2 and an exponent of 2 cancel each other out. But I still have this root 2 sitting down here. Now in math, we don't like to have radicals in the denominator at all. That's considered to be not simplified. So to handle that, what I do is I multiply both the numerator and denominator by root 2, because this is equal to 1, right? You're not going to multiply anything by 1. And what happens is, is I get root uh, x root 2, over root 2 times another root 2 is just 2. And it turns out that in a textbook, this would be the answer that would be in the back of the book. 
However, on the ACT, a lot of times, they do leave the denominator as a square root in their answers a lot of the time. But in all of your other classes, you're going to want to do this little procedure here, and that's called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so x root 2 over 2 is really the answer that we're looking for for this one. All right. Okay, this one looks kind of the same. So we'll take a look at this one. If I can get the pages unstuck. All right, so this one, let's suppose that we go ahead and do the same thing we did before. Let's do 176 over 44 x. Can't forget the x. Okay, so now what do I do? Well, I'm going to simplify this fraction. Okay, so I'm going to divide both of them by 2 right from the start. Okay, so 176 divided by 2 is 88. 44 divided by 2 is 22. Still with an x down there. Okay, we can do that one more time. We can divide 88 by 2. Actually, we can divide them by 11, couldn't we? Or we could divide them by 22. 22 goes into 88 four times, doesn't it? So we could actually do this. Equals the square root of 4, right, over x. Okay, so if we do that, we can split it back up into the square root of 4 over the square root of x. But again, we don't like this to be sitting here with a radical in the, in the denominator, nor do we like this because it's the same thing. So now what I do is I rationalize and I multiply the numerator and denominator by root x. And I can do that because x is never going to be 0 because we've assumed that it's greater than 0. Okay, and that's equal to 1. So what I have now is 2, that's 2, right? 2 root x over root x times another root x. They both square roots cancel out, and you get x back. Again, that would be the answer that would be in the back of the book, and it just takes practice until um, you get the skills to go from here to here, here, and then rationalize, and then you get your final answer right there. All right, so we got one more. Okay, this time... We're going to go ahead and do like we did before, square root of 30x over 120. Okay, so if we're looking at that now, 30 and 120. Um, 30 goes into 120 four times. And so if it goes into it four times, we really have the square root of x over 4, because we're just dividing both of these by 4, right? And so if we have root x over 4, we can now split it back up into root x over root 4. Now, because the square root of 4 is 2, we do not have to rationalize this time because that's simplified right here to an integer, and we don't need to uh, put a square root down here anymore. We don't need to rationalize because this is now done. It doesn't have a radical in the denominator anymore. So your answer is root x over 2. All right, guys, hope this helps. Uh, remember to like and share and subscribe to my channel and we'll have more good stuff coming up very soon. See you guys.